Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to authenticate our application with Firebase and for that we will implement our Firebase into our app and then we will access it with an email address and password and log into the Firebase authentication. So let's get started. <clears throat> So in order to um, set up a Firebase authentication, we first have to go to console firebase.google.com and there you will see most likely no project at all, but for me I have already created some projects. Now we can add another project and we will call this one a login, no, login authentication tutorial. And now I press on continue, you will get there as something about the crash analytics, we will take them for now. Then it will ask you for an account. I will take the default one. And now it starts to create the project for us. This can take a little while. So as always, there will be some speed up for you. So after the project is created for us, we can continue. And you will see you get automatically navigated to the Firebase Auth. And here is a lot of documentation, of course, how everything works. One of the key things is the authentication that we are interested in. So we jump into it and as you see, here is already some stuff and you can set up sign-in methods. And now you can select different sign-in possibilities for your application. One of them is anonymous. Anonymous allows guest users to access your application, which I enable for now. And also what you see, there is also email and password, which I also enable. And you can have even email links, so they send you an email and you don't have to create a password for it. It's passwordless sign-in. I don't activate that for now, but it's possible. You have also OAuth education like Twitter and Facebook, where you um, have to provide an app ID that you create in the application from Facebook or Twitter. You can learn here more about that topic and also for GitHub and yeah, all the other stuff. But we are mostly interested today in the email and password. And I also take the anonymous function just in case there is something happening. Okay, so we also can create like templates that we send for email verifications. If you want a password reset function, you have the option here. You can change the email address and so on and so forth and also have SMS validation, which is pretty neat. Then we have the usage, there you can see the usage for this application in authentication and you can add your own users, which I will do now. So I call it max at test.de, uh, well, test.de and the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, perfect. So now we have created that email address with the password. It creates automatically a user identifier. So it is a universal key that identifies this specific user always exactly. So we can use that later. And if you go to the sign in methods once more, <clears throat> you can also see if we scroll down here, we have also authorized domains that gives you an information which domains, if you use a web app for Firebase, which domains are allowed. So you have to add your domain if you have a server or something. You have the advanced settings like one account per email address. You can change that and say, okay, um, you, every email address can have multiple accounts or the manage sign up quota, which is uh, because of this Spark. Uh, tool that I use. So that is the um, lowest amount of Firebase that you can have. There you are, have a current quota of 100. If we have set up everything in our authentication, we move to project overview and here we can add different app applications. So for us, we want to do it with the iOS simulator today. So I select iOS and now we have to enter some stuff. So the iOS bundle ID we can find in the Android studio. If we navigate to iOS, and we can find that if we right click on the project, go to Flutter and say open iOS module in Xcode. Then Xcode st starts up and you can click on runner and you will see down here under this bundle identifier, the name of your application. So we copy that one, go back to, to Firebase and in Firebase, we enter now this bundle identifier. Under app nickname, we give it a nickname. So for, uh, for example, uh, authentication uh, tutorial and the app store ID is optional. If you have that app already deployed in the app store, you can add here the ID for it. <clears throat> but I say now register this application and now we come to the next step. I download that one now and 
I save it and if you see inside of my download folder we have now this file ready to go and it explains us already how to set up the thing. In uh, Flutter it is a bit different so I go back to our Xcode and also the finder needs to be there and I open runner and open runner again. We have to provide that file inside of this runner file and what we have to do now is we have to move that file inside to the runner and make sure that you copy items if needed and the target is runner. For that we press finish and you see now the file is added. So and if we take a look into Android Studio, this is just my verification always, I jump also in this folder and you see that info plist inside of the runner. So now because the info plist con contains a lot of keys and I'm happy to show them right now but um, you usually don't want to put them on github.com. So for that case we add also the file into our github uh, ignore. So we say runner. So yeah, so I added the Google service info plist in git ignore and as you can see in Android Studio it's getting directly this um, I would say green or yellowish color and this tells us that this um, file is not under version control anymore and that is good because you don't want that everyone access your Firebase repository. So now you can see you should have to set up the pod installation and everything but if we take another look into another Firebase Google.com docs flutter setup we can also see that we can um, actually skip that. And we downloaded the uh, file, we added it to Xcode, which is very important for Mac OS users. For Android users, uh, you will get the installation notes inside of the Firebase uh, in initialization. So you can use that immediately. That works fine for you. And for um, Mac OS users, what I want to do is we can add the uh, dependency here that we find here, Firebase Core and Firebase Analytics just to make sure. And as you can see, here's also Firebase Auth. So I will take these free because that helps us right now. So I jump back into Android Studio and add the pub into our pubspec.yaml these free dependencies. Of course, packages.get, right? And if we jump now back to our loading, uh, loading authenticator and jump through all of these steps, we come to the last one, run your app to verify installation and if everything works as I expected it then we should see now as soon as I close the app completely and start it up again through the Firebase core and the Firebase auto uh, analytics a ping to the um, Firebase and with that it will automatically verify that the app is there and so you have also a verified application here. So let's see. If you take a closer look into our console, you can see configured the default Firebase app, configured the default app and satisfied. And now you can see the first pings are made. These are logs from Firebase and tells us that the, uh, that, the, um, that the connection between Firebase and our SDK works perfectly fine. I've got the verification inside of Android Studio in the print console, but unfortunately, if we jump back to Firebase, we can, can see that this run your app to verify didn't work. But what we can do is we can just skip that step because we know we work fine already and go further with our work. So we implemented our Firebase out already and the Firebase core. And now we have the option to authenticate against the Firebase out library. So for that, we can go into the login screen. And here we have the unpressed method. And before we always navigated directly to the next page whenever we wanted to. But now we have to do a bit slightly different. And I will do it here in a very quick and a bit dirty way. I will put everything inside of the widget. About the concerns and the architecture I will make a later video. So for that we will take the Firebase Auth. Firebase Auth. And I will make that private. And say Firebase Auth instance and with that we get the instance of Firebase Auth and now we can use that down here and say we want to sign in with email and password. The email and password are null at the moment but we want of course to have here values so it tries to get the text values and if we take a look here we currently have a username and password just the text fields without anything inside. So to get the information from here, we have to provide a controller for them. 
and call that one a user name controller and the other one we have also a controller for it and we call it password controller and we can make them private and now we go up here and we initialize them they are bars and we say <coughs> text editing controller and we create two of them right so for password controller and now we use them down here and what we have now here is the opportunity to take the username controller which is actually an email and say dot text so with that we get the text of the email controller and the other one is the password controller and we can get here the text for and if you have seen the video where we use the form and form validation that is a perfect case because now we don't validate these informations inside of these fields right now so we just push in whatever is entered here so in your application you most likely want to make that a bit more sophisticated and this sign in with email and password returns us a future of the value odd result and can throw different value uh, errors. And what I will do now is I will try catch in that area because we want to catch the error. And if we have an error, we want to print that for now just to make something visible for us. And what we also want to do, this navigator.push has to be part of the try catch. So if we throw an error inside of the Firebase, let's say the Firebase is not available, we don't have an internet connection, we can't log in the uh, user, we want not to navigate at all. And the next step is now to say, okay, if we get a user here, we get, <clears throat> we have to await for that, right? Because it is an asynchronous future and we want to get the odd result. Now inside of here, we can say we get an odd result and this result user should not be null. And if the user is not null from the result, then we want to navigate. So now we sign in with email and password. We have a user and with that user, we navigate now to the login screen. So let's try that with our user that we created. Perfect. So what we can see is uh, nothing. We navigated as before, but what we can see down here is we actually did something with the connection path. And because we have here an if statement, we wouldn't navigate if there wouldn't be a user for that. So if I go back and enter a wrong username, so for example, I just delete something of that and say login, then we can see in our uh, console that we throw a platform exception. Error, user not found. There is no user corresponding to this identifier. The user may have been deleted. Oh, cool. We can now navigate. We understand now how to use Firebase Auth more or less. And what we also can do is sign in anonymously. So, and what this means is we don't want to provide any user, uh, user or feedback, but we can still identify the user inside of Firestore. And if we take a look into run, we can see, okay, something has sent to Firestore. <clears throat> and the next thing is if I skip that for now, we can also see in the authentication, there is an anonymous user who gets his own user identifier that we can use for the different parts. And if we take a look into firebase.org, we can see here are a, a lot of method existing with sign in. So sign in with credentials, where we get an auth credential, sign in anonymously, sign in with email and password, sign out, which is also very important. If you want to, the user is getting navigated back to a screen after he signs out, uh, he can sign in with a custom uh, token with email and link, which is uh, you send an email, he clicks on a link, he gets navigated back and gets uh, directly logged in. You can fetch the sign in methods from Firebase as a list of strings, how you can uh, actually log in with your Firebase. Then we have the sign in with email link and send sign in with email link. So all of these different things are possible with Firebase and you can play around with that. There is really a lot of stuff that you can identify. All right, we managed it. We logged in into our Firebase. We tracked our users. We created a Firebase a project together. And in the next couple of series where we talk about Firebase, I want to bring you closer to the um, architecture and how you can set up the things a bit more uh, sophisticated instead of pushing everything into one widget. 
On the right side, as always, you will find a very beautiful uh, subscribe button that you really should click. And on top of me, you find two videos. Give the video a like. You are awesome and we'll see you next time. Bye.